My name is Alyssa Rosas, and I'm Viraj Fatherford. I'm Julia Downing. I'm a fifth year in graduate school right now, and wondering if you could go through maybe one experience of a major setback that you've had either through your graduate school or your career, and how did you bounce back from that? Well, essentially, even if you're a Nobel Prize, most of the time, I know you're not going to believe me, but, but, but you have to trust me, we're failing. We're failing most of the time. Failure is part of the process of a scientist. And that makes sense. Now, if you understand that, then there is something else that is unfortunately not easy to teach, uh, is how you're going to relax to failure. Don't believe your education is over. And it's still valid for me, which I'm 55. I keep learning on the best way to react to situations that I just don't like. I cannot say it will make you successful, but certainly it will make you a much more happy scientist. I read uh, that uh, you shared the Nobel Prize with your PhD supervisor. Yes. Uh, so I was wondering, um, what, is, what is the history? Why you choose uh, Professor Mayer? How to see that you are under the right person and who will guide you well? Thank you for the question. That's a, that's a fascinating question. There are clearly something special with the time you're going to spend during your PhD. My usual advice is to tell them, well, the topic doesn't matter very much, um, but think about who you're going to do it because you're going to work during three years or four years or five years, depending on the, um, of the, of the structure you're working with. It's a long time. The reason why I decided to do a PhD with Michel Mayor, because the way he was teaching was, let's say, a bit messy. It was not very strict. And, 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 it, and I need that because when I have a, a professor which is too well organized that tend to tell me too much the detail of the story, it prevents my creativity to build the rest. I realize that. So, so the best teacher I've ever had, they were usually the teacher that were telling 80% of the story, but I had to make up the 20% the 20, 20 that, that was left. And by doing this last step, I would understand way better anything I would do. I wanted to ask you, do you have any hobbies or um, skills outside of science and outside of your research that you feel um, keep that curiosity alive and contribute to your science in indirect ways? Okay, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> uh, the, um, the, well, I don't need to keep my curiosity alive. That, that is, is, I'm curious about anything, but, but I, I, I like doing other activities because um, there is there is a moment when you work too much with your brain um, and my brain at least got completely saturated and I need to do something different. I do pretty much a lot. My, my problem is I need to sleep quite a lot. Uh, you know, we, we keep hearing about this uh, super CEO that sleeps six hours and, and, and Oh my God, I cannot do that. I need my eight hours of sleep. I mean, I am a, I need my sleep. And if I don't get my sleep, my brain doesn't work. So I, <laughs> so I, I really need to sleep. And, and to get a good sleep, you need to stop your brain working at least one or two hours before you sleep. So, so you have to have some kind of other activities. I, I tell you something, when I see my PhD students too often uh, coming in the office, I tell them, what are you doing there? I mean, do you think science is done in the office? I mean, science is done by feeling good and getting ideas. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your response. Thank you all. That was really a great day. Thank you very much.